Hey, Don here. Okay, back with another not live stream. Um, going to uh, try out uh, the new mic. <clears throat> Let's get over here where I can. Right now, well, I've got the SM58 hooked up. So, because I've been using this new mic, uh, dual mic setup, it's a lapel mic, uh, you know, on about a 16 foot cable. It has um, this adapter that I use. Um, got the, it's a TRRS for the phones, and then it has another uh, that silver adapter, which is the one that makes it work on my phones. And um, <clears throat> it also has. I haven't tried them yet. I tried it with my old one, and I tried it with with uh, just like a standard. Um, <clears throat> trying to get this open, had it all tied up. Uh, I guess I had it in sort of a quasi bow or something, but with double, <laughs> with little uh, nunchucks on the end, and <clears throat> see if that'll make it come loose. And uh, loops tied itself in a good mess. Okay. That's not something I expected to have a problem with. It coming. I think I made it worse instead of better. There. Okay. So um, it's a it's got it's, like, it's got this little bag that came with it. Called Pop Voice. Um, it sounds better than my first uh, cheap. This one was fifteen dollars, and this one. Uh, it was on sale, and the first one was nine ninety nine on, on sale. I guess it was on sale too. I think. Uh, anyway, there's the other adapter. That is the one that makes it. Uh, that'll plug into you know a regular computer mic input. Got a couple. It came with a couple of extra windscreens. And uh, <clears throat> so what I was thinking is I could uh, add. Well, I've got these two here. They're, this is just a gold one, and this is a plastic one. Uh, this is the one that I keep on my he earphone headset, uh, my mixing headset there. Um, so anyway, I'm going to put – that'll make it quarter inch. That's, you know, that's a TRS, and this is a it's TRS or stereo um, quarter inch. So um, – let me get this, uh, let's see, let me get this on, and then I'll try plugging it in. Oh. Let's see, go to cam one. I'll use the camera to help me see where to put the mics. Got it enough cable so I can reach over there, and then yeah, let me do that. What I do whenever I, like, this is such a long cable, I give it a little on both ends and then keep the, keep the little rolled up portion for um, sticking on my pocket, especially when I was using it on phone three in, in the little bag that I wear around my waist. Well, I just stuck the extra in the bag, but, but then when I put it on phone two, that's what, when I did that in the pocket, uh, I had phone too, just like either laying here. Well, the first time I used it, I, I had it to plug into phone too with it on the. You can see the silver rod next to the. Behind this, right? This, well, I can actually touch it. Of course, I can shake that camera though. But anyway, that's the mic stand that I use for phone too. And uh, so anyway, I had it, you know, plugged into the phone up on the mic stand, and then I would. Uh, all this stuff is so fiddly to mess with. You don't realize it, except for when you start doing it in front of the camera. Uh, anyway, I stuck this in my pocket, and that gives it, you know, that way you don't break anything. Um, I don't know if I want to do that this time, or I don't think so. With the, all the keyboard tray and the everything else for it to get hung on, I think I'll put it up here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Because I believe I gave myself enough slack to be able to move around. 
and uh, I thought I would do this part. I started to put it on ahead of time, but I thought, well, I might as well show them. Um, you know, because you never can really see them. I haven't shown them really. Well, I did show them when I, I think I did a little video, like a little unboxing video. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I just thought I would show them in part in this video. Like now I got to figure out where to put my arms <laughs> and still be able to talk on the mic. Now, um, the thing is, okay. There's there's uh, differences in your signal. So I'm gonna take now. I'm I'm almost certain that this one here won't work. Let me go ahead and uh, adjust the view here. Right now, I guess this is. I'm almost certain that this one here would not work on the mixer uh, because it is. Uh, it well, we'll try it with uh, without it first. That's, that's what I think, and I'll try. If it doesn't work, then I'll try it. But uh, the, my, what I think would work was going from the original. It, it, what that does is changes the pinout. See, they're TRRS. They're both TRRS, but it changes the pinout. So um, <clears throat> what wires go where? And so this one now goes to TRS, and I put that quarter-inch adapter on there to make it fit these quarter inch inputs on the mixer. Now, let's see what we got. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> what I have on this mixer is two mic inputs and two stereo inputs, but they're not, I was thinking they were a single stereo input. I hadn't really even looked that close, uh, but there's actually a right and a left. And, uh, but well, makes sense because it's uh, they're not they're, it's a it's channel one two three four five six that's that's how it is so um you can actually end up having four channels but only one knob to control for three four and five and six but the other thing is you don't have a gain on uh three four so what it's really meant for is for uh like you know tape decks and CD players and phones or whatever nowadays. Inputs for that. I actually have my cassette deck plugged into 5 and 6. I don't have anything in channel 2. I have my SM58 on channel 1. Nothing in channel 2 and nothing in 3, 4. Now, <clears throat> to actually hit, hit right and left, um, you would need to actually split this off not to just a single quarter inch, but to a right and a left and I may even have something like that but if I just get one or the other channel it'll go into the it's going see my main output goes into the B amp which will take a mono or a stereo signal and then it will send it out I'm pretty certain it will send it out as stereo no matter what it gets uh, it may not it may take a left to the left and the right to the right I, I do well yeah no because this okay this um, Oh, yeah, okay. The mixer will do that because, okay, my mic's a mono input, right? Single. T it's TRS. or Well, actually, it's TRS, but it's it's XLR. Uh, so it's not TRS with tip ring sleeve. So XLR, it's still the same. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, still the same type of, uh, the, though the pin out, the wiring is different in each one. But from a mic like this and this in 58, this is an, uh, a balanced signal going in here and so the mic signals are really expected to be balanced whether they're XLR or TRS the uh, inputs over here are actually expected to be unbalanced and I'm pretty sure this mixer will take either one balanced or unbalanced <clears throat> now, the Mackies always did and I think I've, I've used Behringer's too I, I use Mackies back when I mix sound for bands and stuff most of the time uh, but I have used Behringer's, and I'm pretty sure from that they would do that too. And I don't remember. <clears throat> I looked over the specs, you know, before I bought it, but I don't remember now. I've had it over a year now. So anyway, I'm going to plug it in. I've got some gain already. I figured out kind of what the area of how much gain I would want for my SM58, so I just duplicated it over here just so I wouldn't forget, uh, you know, and forget to do it. 
because I've got, well, what do I have? I have, have SM57. Oh, yeah, and I have an SM58 and another SM58, a funky one that had a broken, <laughs> the, the uh, this part was broken down here, and I replaced it with some PVC pipe. I made a drum, kick drum mic out of it, but I actually never ended up using it. But, uh, and I have a 57, which I haven't used on here since I bought the thing. So anyway, I'm going to plug it in. I don't ex really expect it to work in here, but we'll see. You can actually, there's one trick you can do sometimes, and that's go one click, not all the way in, and it might get you a signal. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, yeah. Only thing, yeah, there's no mute. I wish there was a mute buttons on these channels, because then I wouldn't have to disturb. I have that set precisely where I want it. Um, so I think what I'll do is <clears throat> just, uh, oh, I'll put my headset on and listen to it. <clears throat> And then I can tell what's going on. Because uh, the head the headset's plugged into the um, check 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 headset's plugged into the um, check 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 check. I'm still not getting my uh, right side for some reason. Check check check. I mean my left side in this case. Check check check. Well. One side's better than no side. I think my little cable, I've got, check, 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 the cable that I've got plugged in there coming out of the uh, control room output, I think, it, maybe, yeah, I just messed it up. Check, 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 going, check, check, check. I think it's going bad up here on this end. Check, check, check. Need another cable, that's what I need. <clears throat> check, 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 check. Okay, now they're both working. It's that cable, that's what I thought. I need to mark that one as bad and quit using it. <coughs> okay. Yeah, it could make a difference in this test I'm doing, so. Um, oh, yeah. I said I was going to only do that view to myself. But actually, I think maybe the double view might be better. That way, wherever I get, I'm, you know, if I get out here in my lap with something, I can, you know, have more chance just to see what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to just move this mic away from me. And then, of course, I'm wearing the lapels. Okay. First, I'll plug it all the way in. Okay. Now, well, let's just see. Check one, two, check one, two, check, check. Okay, it did not work on the mic channel, just like the last little lapel mic that I tried out like this. Let's see, right and left. Left is generally mono, so let's turn that and try this one. Okay, that didn't work, <clears throat> but I always rem try to remember to turn your channels all the way down before you plug and unplug things. Now, well, let's try this gold one. Could always be something wrong with that one. I mean, as far as I know, it works works just fine, but... Okay, I'm going to check, check, check. Okay, so, um, yeah, there's a trick you can do sometimes when you're trying to, you can plug it in halfway. Okay, so that's not working. Uh, the last chance over here. Okay. Wow. Got to remember to hold the board down. It's not heavy enough. It's not a big board. It's not heavy enough. 
Okay, now there's one other thing I'll try, and that is the, uh, let's just use that gold one, I think. It seems like it has a better connector. Well, I don't want to go in there. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay, we want. The gold one I really want to keep for my headset. Okay, so this one needs to be... Change, we'll change the pin out by plugging this one in here. That's what makes it work with my phones. Doesn't mean one way or the other word that would make it work with the mixer. But we'll try this. Okay, now. Okay, that was halfway in. And all the way in and halfway in. Either one worked. Okay, now I'm trying left and right both here. Check. 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 Now I'm going to try my other gold-plated or gold-colored. I don't think it's actually gold-plated. They always advertise them. They say gold. but I find that hard to believe because they don't cost like gold. Well, that spike of noise, that was what happens when you leave the channel turn all the way up and plug it all the way to the way right in. Now, let me get up here and look over. Uh, there's a, other only other things I can imagine is something like trying to, is even in the, I remember, in, I kind of do remember this from the manual. You can, uh, it was saying, well, you can even get another channel by using a, kind of a fold channel, I guess, by using the uh, aux return input. If you're not using it for, you know, send and receive for an effects unit, which I'm not. I'm daisy chaining straight from the mixer to the effects to the computer. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, let me get up there and I'll have to get up there and look at that. Which I can't see it from here.
Now, okay, none of that worked. Uh, there's one thing I wonder. If I had a either, you know, 3.5 millimeter to, I'd need to get from TRS 3.5, stereo, you could say stereo uh, 3.5 millimeter to um, two quarter inches. But I don't see, you see, I should get one, if it's going to work at all, I should get either a left or a right out of it, you know, by what I just did. I really tried, I want to think about it, I think I've tried everything that, that tells me that no, it ain't going to work. And I got out every adapter, I mean, I got a lot of different kinds of adapters. Last time with the other mic, it's the same kind of setup, it had that, worked on my, the deal to make it work on my phone. And uh, I, got every, I got out every adapter that I had, tried them, spent, I think I spent a couple of hours trying them. These are not all my adapters. These are just a few that were quick grab. I was thinking I had a, I have a Y in here I did, unless I put it to use. Here it is, but it's not the kind I'm talking about, really. This one goes from 3.5. It just splits. It's basically for out headphone output. Like, for instance, I could plug it into the headphone output on here if I use that quarter-inch adapter. Then I can plug two sets of headphones into it. That's what that's for. So it's going the opposite direction of what I need. What I would need is to go from uh, this to, uh, and I suppose you could try it just for the fun of it. Uh, I don't think it changes. It shouldn't be changing the pin out at all, though. So you could do this and then. You see, I haven't done anything, though. Well, unless I went from there to, like, I could put a male to male in there with another quarter-inch adapter, and that'd give me, wouldn't give me anything, really. But, uh, let's see, did I turn everything back to normal? Yeah, I don't think the effects return is any use in this case either. So, uh, check, check. Yeah, those are hard to, uh-oh, check one, two, check, check one, two, how did I do that, check one, two, I somehow, I guess when I was messing around, pushing down on it to try, or when I, jo maybe when I jostled it so much, trying to get, uh, things unplugged I actually uh, knock the you have to press in I'm using the control room not the headphone output so you have to press in control room uh, 
oh, two track, two control room because the way I'm getting my see that way, I'd come. I have two outputs on my VM, uh, the phones, and the uh, regular output up here, left left and right, quarter inch, and then I use a what's called an insert cable. Actually, it's quarter inch uh, T T S quarter inch to the other end is T R S quarter inch, and so. Uh, now I adapted that on over. Actually, this one might be RCA on the other end. But anyway, um, this goes, yeah, it's probably quarter inch to RCA on the other end. Going to my tape deck. I mean, no, this goes to the computer. Yeah, so this is quarter inch, quarter inch to TRS, quarter inch, then adapted it down to TRS, you know, eight, eighth, uh, eighth inch or three, four, five, three point five millimeter. Um, so when you're going into my computer and then my uh, there's the input coming from the. We well, can't see that in the. Oh yeah, you can. Uh, the input coming in from the uh, Behringer mixer, and then the phone's output is going over here, and it's a TRS quarter inch to RCA RCA going into the tape input on the mixer, and so then when I send the tape to control room, then I can hear it out of the control room output. Um, you would think you would use be uh, really nice to use the control room for recording, but if um, well, it sounds a little noisy the way it is. Uh, maybe just because of the, I think it's because the headphone output is actually a little noisy on this this here. So uh, anyway, um, I don't know. I did. I don't remember trying. I think I just did it with uh, main outputs going to the compute going to the. V amp and then the main output of the V amp to the computer. It worked well, and I left it, you know. Um, and I also thought, well, I think one of the reasons I did that is because I thought hearing myself talk like that just kind of drives me crazy. Um, that loud. <coughs> um, now that I turned it off all the way, it kind of makes me think I'm not working. <laughs> it does tell me when I'm getting too loud. Um, I'm used to mixing my main output being my output on my mixer because I mix for live bands and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I really never, we never really used the control room outputs, you know, on any mixer that it, it, not all the mixers we used had them, but if they did, we didn't use them. Uh, we didn't do any, when we did recording, I usually used a tape output or usually an RC output to, uh, I never got to do any real serious recording to multi tracks on, on live shows. Um, so I would just be recording to a cassette deck or something. Um, so I just had the, usually just the tape output. I did try using the aux sins, uh, to try to give it a more detailed mix, but that really never worked out too well because you really, it would, if you could, if you were, if you were, you had two people, one to mix the recording and one to mix the live show, uh, because, uh, everything changes as you change the mix because you need to for a live show then it changes what goes through the aux as well so you need to monitor that and write you know change that a, a accordingly but uh anyway um and the tape output it gets whatever the main output gets it's just a, a line level signal you know that's the only difference in that so um it, it, it ends up overall getting you a better little you know just a two-track that way <laughs> by yourself like I said so um, I just puzzles the heck out of me why that doesn't work though I mean not that but uh, I have I haven't plugged this new one into the computer but the old one worked perfectly when you plug it in you into the computer and what I had ended up do, needing to do was uh, um, just like that uh, not using the extra adapter that I have to use on my phones. So I'm going to put it back because that's what I'm going to end up doing is putting this back in the phone, you know, to use it. I was just think I just got thinking, you know, well, this one has a, that other cable was just barely long enough to reach over there to my little workbench behind me and all that when I was making videos. And it, but it was a little short. That one's like 16 feet long. So I could actually go all around this room here. <laughs> Uh, f with it plugged into the mixer and I thought you know if it was would work in there I'd have the benefit of the compressor and the noise gate and all that 
uh, and EQ and everything that I have here for these little lapel mics and uh, they would sound quite a bit better I'm sure um, <clears throat> I wouldn't really be able well I can change the EQ here on the mixer but I wouldn't want to change anything in this because I wouldn't want to mess up my SM58 but I would imagine what I got in, in here would be pretty good for these two and if I did want to like just tweak the EQ a little bit I can do that here on the mixer uh, but since it doesn't work at all, and I, I'm not gonna, I, yeah, I, I don't like going to try something that doesn't work. I want to keep trying until it works, but uh, I don't think that'd be any sense in that because I spent like, I'm pretty sure it's about two hours. I made a video of it and everything. Um, I just knew that I, if I would, some, you know, sooner or later I was gonna find. Uh, the right combination of adapters, adapter or combination of adapters to get it to work. But I never did, so. I'm going to put this stuff back in there. That's kind of my quick grab stuff. And that is. Since I'm running this little. It's actually an RCA with quarter inch adapters that's going into the uh, output for the control room, left and right, and then it goes down to uh, a male TRS, and then I put a female to female, and then I plug my, can't really see it, but that's where I plug in my uh, headset. Uh, that I, I the reason I did that well I needed that kind of, I needed a Y see I needed an adapter to get from uh, oh I just there's the thing I need right there take this I would have to go without the head well I can use the headphones yeah that thing there would would do what I need to do to plug it in here I guess I'll try that before I give up um a little drink of course I just got it where both sides are working when I unplug it and move it I'll have one of the I wouldn't want to use this one. Oh, I have I have a wire I, I took one out I think I have another one unless I started I ended up using it the other day I think I did let's look and see I think I had it. I know I, I, I had it stuck in here. Everything's going where I don't want it to go. Okay, what's this? Nope, I don't have it. I may have ended up using it again, but it was a. Uh, Attention here, maybe you're holding it in your hand and you don't know it. <laughs> no, those are just regular RCAs. Oh, yeah, what I need is that. Let's see. Well, hmm. I don't actually remember using it for anything, but maybe I did. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is this is an output, so that's not going to work. But what I can do is turn my headset off and uh, pop this over here into this channel here. It won't work on this one because it's only got a single input. But this one is where it would work if it was going to. What did I do? I already put away my little. I gotta still have my adapter. Let's turn them back on to work. I'm used to hearing myself, so I know where I'm at on the mic. That's one benefit of monitoring your self. And like I said, this is what I already put away that other adapter. But that's a, oh, I don't need it now. Okay, this. Yeah, okay, and then over here, I'll be plugging it in to, uh, let me go ahead and get this off now. Okay, I'll plug my headset. 
put it up there out of the way. Okay, now, um, I'll pull this over to where I, it can be seen, I guess. Yes, it can be seen, barely. Okay, now, this is what I'm getting at, but I don't want it plugged in there, so. Because <clears throat> it makes you, you just got to wonder if, if it would work if you do it that way. That's the really the right way to hook it up. So, um. Yeah, okay, so there we go. Got it hooked up. And uh, now we'll try bringing that up. I want to move the mic away from me. I thought I was seeing a little, a very, very slight signal. That's the other thing you may need to gain. Uh, let me get this plugged into the earphone. Oh, wait, I think I know where it is. Yeah, it's right there, I think. Now then, which one is the earphone up here? I'm going to have to get up and look at it. I see a little bit of a signal, but I don't hear it. Oh. Now, wait a minute. Let me see. Uh -huh. Just a minute. Okay. Here we go. I think it's actually working, but it's not a strong enough signal. Yeah, it's working. It's the only thing we're he you're hearing. Or the reason I saw that small signal is because Mike is still hot over there. I didn't want to turn it down. Um, yeah, if I bang on the mics, it doesn't do anything. So, um, well, I still could do the other adapter. I had myself fooled for a minute there. I'd forgotten that I did. I didn't want to turn it down because I didn't want to lose my place, my setting on it. Okay. Move it away. Okay. Now I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try this in the aux uh, return because then I'll have a left and a right. <laughs> Check one, two, check one, two. 
Okay, so, um, nah, I don't think. Oh, well, did I try it without that extra adapter? I don't remember now. Okay, so it really doesn't matter which channel. You could just turn up the aux return on whatever channel you're... Oh, I hear some. Oh, yeah. Yes, of course I do. I hear myself on the SM58 now because I'm talking right on it. Okay, so... Um, turn the aux return up a bit. You should be able to do it on any channel. Uh, well, let's just do it on the one I'm on. Check one, two. Let me get move this check one. So that, yeah, that's a lot to, I don't hear the effects from the VM with it plugged into the headphone. That's why I don't use the headphone app, but that's why I do it the other way. But uh, now it's just a flat voice with no effects. It sure sounds cleaner and none of that. There's a little bit of noise, like I said, coming out of that headphone output on that VM. But uh, it's, it's okay for just kind of helping you get a volume level. But, and I kind of learned how to work with it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's not any use at all. So it just won't work. Let's put my headset back like I had it. Now, any quick little test always turns out to be an hour minimum. So, uh, but yeah, I'm back like I was. I think I even have both both ears working. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, it is very nice to be able to use that to see exactly see what what I got, what kind of signal I got. You know, when I need to. But generally, I don't bother the settings once I get them working good. Uh, and then what I do is I do a test video. I don't listen on the headsets, you know, and I, I just do a test video before I start a video, and then I listen back to it. But sometimes, like a couple of days ago, I did not notice a telltale noise. Basically, I guess it was this noise of the compressor kicking in a little bit. Actually, I think it was a bit of feedback it was trying to start up. And then there was a little noise of the compressor kicking in and squelching it down. And I didn't hear it. And I made a full, you know, video with it doing that. <laughs> and I had spent forever making sure I got, uh, I had heard a buzz. Oddly enough, I heard that. I heard a buzz in the uh, lapel mic coming from phone 2 when phone 2 was plugged into the power adapter. And I worked and worked over an hour getting that straightened out. And then uh, never did notice the whole time that I had a little bit, had a little problem with the SM58, actually. <laughs> so there you go. Let's see. How do I want all this? I think this is about how I want this cable anyway. Okay. So, because I'm going to go ahead and put it into the phone, too, now. I don't want that extra pigtail on there. Okay. So, well, it was worth a try, I guess. The um, gonna have to look my mixer over and everything. <clears throat> I worked, and then after that, I worked really hard at getting them both just right. And so now, hopefully, I didn't mess up the SM58. Um, I'm matching the volume on the uh, SM58 and what came, you know, in the lapel coming from phone two, getting the volumes as close as I could get them to the same. Uh, 
worked real hard on that. Okay, so, um, well, we'll f let's see, yeah, let me go ahead and look that over right quick before I forget. Okay, so it's uh, all just blue blazes in here. Seventy-eight point four degrees. Heater's running. Okay. Um, I'm disappointed that that didn't work, but. Uh, Yeah, 48 minutes. That's how long this video is. <laughs> I figured that. Okay, so, um, I mean, that's what you got to do. You either got to try it out and see. You won't know unless you try. The, um, so since my battery went, uh, started swelling up and I'm, and I'm thinking it's too dangerous to keep using it on phone three, then, uh, I can now, and I don't. I, my phone too is the one that's up there. You know, when I was showing, it's the one showing this view right here, right now, and I can just plug that mic into it. And I did one the other day. I did audio and video from it, but in the past I've had trouble with the really audio and video getting even worse out of sync when you do that. But I was going out in the garage or the front yard. You know, we're right in front of the garage there where my truck is. You know, in the driveway. And that's really the real reason all that. You know, that's the biggest problem. I'm too far away from the router uh, in that spot. But uh, it seemed to work pretty good the other day. I did that a whole video. Uh, of course, then I'm tethered to the... I'm not free. Like with, when, I, when I had phone 3 and my little bag around my waist, I can go anywhere I want, and I still have audio. It even works... Uh, it usually even works all the way out into the garage. Uh, the audio does. Because it's not as near, it doesn't need as much bandwidth, you know. I think that's, uh, I think the bandwidth really drops down the further away you get on the phones, you know. I don't know it does, I've tested it. <clears throat> and uh, But the audio doesn't need the, as much bandwidth as the uh, video does. <clears throat> and uh, because e no matter how I have the phone or which phone I use, it's still the audio and the video is being streamed over the Wi-Fi back to my computer. That's how, how I do it. That's the only way I can do it with these phones. Um, it's the only way you can get the video or audio out of the phones into the computer. Is I've tried. These phones don't support OTG. Uh, I, I think maybe there might be some apps that... Uh, I'm not sure. I, I haven't... The only thing, I do have one thing that might be able to do that and you know be able to plug a USB cable, this tablet here, it's a 10-inch tablet. It's mom. I bought it from my mom, though, so I don't use it very much. I did yesterday as a second camera, but uh, it does support OTG. And what I figured out, I think the only thing I need for my phones to support it is to uh, upgrade the uh, Android operating system to a newer version. I don't have to do that manually because, you know, the manufacturer hasn't given out updates for years. You know, when I bought it, I think they'd already quit giving out updates. I got them for 15 bucks each two or three years ago. They were older models, you know, that Walmart had marked down. So, uh, <clears throat> but they're quad cores. They're only a gig of RAM, but that's enough to do all everything I've been doing with them. Um, that uh, tablet is an eight core with four gig of RAM, I think. It's a pretty pretty good tablet. The only one thing that's not uh, that's kind of aggravating about it it uh, its battery. 
battery usage doesn't work right and usually when you first when you boot it up it'll usually show like 25 or 35 percent when it's really full you shut it down and turn it back on again it usually gets corrects itself but i have figured out that you might as well just if you don't notice it that's fine it's not going to hurt anything it doesn't run down any faster or anything like that um but if you happen to look up and see the battery looks really low and then you think, well, maybe it's really not, shut it down, turn it back on, and it's it shows like, you know, 80% or 90% or whatever. But uh, anyway, um, I was getting ready to go back to work on the Net Pro Max, and I thought, um, you know, since I'm kind of tethered uh, – I didn't. I don't want to take this phone off of the. Uh, I have it on a stick. Uh, I have it all rigged up so I can just take it in or out of the mic. Cl it's one of those clamping mic holders on this mic stand, and in order to make it tough, strong enough to hold it, I, you know the weight of the phone and everything, I put a bunch of rubber bands around it, and it works great. <coughs> but uh, I don't want to take it off of there because it's really handy that way. I can. I can grab the phone and carry it around. And since the phones are you know, streaming video over the Wi-Fi, then as long as I don't get too far from the router, especially if I'm just right, if I'm right here in this room, it's just going to be just as good anywhere in this room. You know, it's like you know, there's if they're not perfect. You can see that right now. You can see you get ghosting, and my mouth doesn't exactly match what I'm saying, and all that. My movements, it gets better and worse, better and worse because of the fluctuations in the Wi-Fi strength and speed the, the speed what the phones do is um, I do have to keep them plugged in because when you don't have them plugged in they will very soon leave um, they, I think what they do is they throttle the Wi-Fi speed in order to keep the battery from running down and if you did have a way to turn that off you probably wouldn't want to because then the battery would run down right in the middle of what you're doing right so um, uh, for instance the other day uh, since there was a buzz in the audio with the with the phone too plugged in to the charger, which is what I do to keep them from running down, because the video will run them down quick. And I was streaming audio and video from it, but I thought, well, just for a little while, I'll leave it unplugged. Well, I went on a lot longer, like I always do, and forgot. And uh, I didn't even realize it, but my what it did is the uh, the phone didn't lock up or anything, but the video locked up. And then, uh, and I didn't notice it, and then, and it was just a frozen picture of me, you know, and then on that camera, but luckily I wasn't staying on that camera, I was switching around, so, but then after just two minutes later, the, well, the audio dropped out, and then came back, and then dropped out completely, and so I had like three minutes or so of that video before I noticed there's no audio signal on my preview up here on OBS Studio, see, right, see if I can, I'm always able to see this. I either see the desktop, this is the desktop view, but if I'm on a the camera, then I see, um, well, I see this. But here's the thing. Um, in order to have um, as big of a preview as you can, then I can't see but two tracks, two channels of, of the audio, and I have to do that to see it all. That's the way I had it, and uh, that's how come I missed it. So today I went ahead and did it like that so that I would be able to see every audio input uh, the whole time of the video. And I may start leaving. I'm going to start probably leave it like that. The thing is when I use the endoscope, I use it to be able to see what I'm working on because I don't see that good anymore. And so the endoscope, you know, I need, I need a, a big enough. The bigger the preview, you know, the better I can see what I'm working on. <clears throat> so... Uh, kind of a trade-off between do I want to always be able to see my audio feeds and my audio levels or do I want to be able to see what I'm working on right now I'm not using the endoscope so I did that but I kind of have to leave things and pick it away and leave it that way because I'll forget my mind and my eyes don't work good so um um I want to go back. I want to go back to work on the Net Pro Max and get and try to get uh, I'm very close now to being able to put it back, put it out in the garage. It's it's been it's my server, right? you know. I've got it back to being my server. It's online, uh, but I want to do a little more work on it before I put it out there. And uh, but 
just now hit me that I think I'm really getting hungry. I, before I started this, I thought I kind of thought I kind of feel hungry, but I thought, well, I can't. I shouldn't be hungry. It's not that long since I had lunch. But uh, my perception of time is not always r- very accurate because I just now realize it's eight thirteen p.m. and when I had lunch was it was probably four or five o'clock, I guess, or three o'clock. I got. I didn't get up real early. I didn't get up real late or real early. But anyway, what? I don't know. See, I'm, I'm tired now. And I, one of the reasons I, I just now realized one of the reasons I'm getting tired and kind of loopy is because I need to eat now. I don't. I'm sitting there thinking I don't want to eat right now. I want to go do this other stuff, but I'm gonna have to eat. And when I eat, though, we want to eat my supper. Then that'll, that'll make me more sleepy. So I don't know if I'm gonna get any more work done tonight at all. I really thought I'll just do a quick little test on this and then. Um, get to work on the Net Pro Max, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. It may end up being all I end up doing. It was just this, this, this one little test here tonight. I didn't feel well during the day, really. I couldn't think straight. I, well, I got. I had trouble. I was uploading my videos that I did yesterday. See, I'm not. I can't stream live right now. I, OBS has got some kind of. I think a bug came up in the last update. I think maybe what happened. I haven't ever really had trouble with that. I think once a long a couple of years ago, I had trouble with it crashing when uh when you hit start stream and i it was i had I thought okay i just changed some settings let's change them back and then it was okay well i tried that this time and it didn't help um i spent hours i think it was yesterday trying to fix it um i did figure out well i'm gonna go off into that again but anyway um yeah, there's more work. I, I might be able, I still kind of think in the back of my mind if I try a couple more things, maybe I can fix it. Maybe I really, uh, the one, <laughs> I guess actually the one thing that I thought, and that was, uh, I guess I'm in, since I'm going in circles, I'll just say what I'm talking about. I added this audio from Cam, since Cam 3 is no longer usable, I added audio Cam 2 to every scene. And the uh, way I did it was copy and paste, you know, from the, the original one that I had in there. But I remember, and they're all gone now, I took them out, but the audio from Cam 3, I had to put, give them a different name in every scene. It wouldn't let me do it. It kept saying you can't use the same name. Well, that didn't happen when I copied and pasted. Um, but here I am making videos, no problems. Every scene works, everything's great. So I thought, well, that's then there's just doesn't make sense. I thought, well, maybe they changed that and they actually fixed it where that doesn't cause you a problem. Um, but uh, I never did go back and like rename every one of these to a different name or anything like that. I thought I had uh, I had forgotten how it worked. I thought. I could just, I've been backing up on my profiles every every time I make a bunch of changes. And uh, I was thinking that's all I needed to do to get back all my scene changes. But actually, there's scene collections too, right there. And I don't have any recent backups. I may have some older ones, but they'd be so old they probably wouldn't be of any use. But I don't have any recent backups from, from 20, all of 2018 and, uh, and 2019. I don't have any backups of. Other than this one here, I've got the one I'm using. Oh, and Untitled's the original, and it's just blank. There's no scene set up in it. Because other, uh, you know, I didn't want to, when I reformatted this machine, I imported, I thought all I did was import my profiles from from Fedora 23 that I had backed up, and I and got all my scenes, which I think maybe that is what how it did it, but uh, then again, maybe I don't remember. Maybe I had that this backup you know that was i just didn't manage i didn't you know name it give it its own name it just the program itself just gives it the name of untitled i don't know why it doesn't call it default that would make that would make more sense to me maybe they did that so they get, encourage you to name them what you want them to be named uh if i had uh i thought i was the making those backups of the, what i'm trying to say is of making those backups of the profiles i thought i was backing up all my changes to my scenes but I needed to be exporting these scenes before I changed the scenes every time, and then I would have had a backup of my scenes. But yesterday or the day before, I did back this one up. But I don't see any uh, 
like I said, all the way through the beginning of 2018, I don't see any backups of my scenes. So, that's, so those are separate. And I was, I was actually in my videos when I was doing. I was I made a bunch of videos doing, trying to figure out what was wrong with OBS and why it was crashing. I still haven't figured that out. And I and I figured that out towards the end of that series of videos. So. Um, and this is going to be in, uh, this will be in the OB in my playlist OBS uh, testing videos too. So this will go along. This even, this was you know all about testing the well, the mixer, trying to make the mixer work with that lapel mic, but it still ties in. It's all about OBS and streaming and or making videos. You're still streaming even though I'm still streaming a video, but it's just to a file on my desktop. You know, it's not streaming over the internet. I guess maybe that's not really streaming, but anyway. Uh, kind of it it kind of is streaming because I'm using this streaming program that has the capability of streaming and or make saving a video to disk so it takes a VLC stream video stream two video streams and an audio well I don't have the audio stream hooked up that was what I was uh, and then the analog audio coming from the mixer to the computer so it is still streams being mixed by OBS Studio, but just saved to a file and not streamed live. So, so I'm calling it a stream. <clears throat> it's easier to do that. <sighs> okay, so um, that's enough talking while you watch the audio levels blink. Forgot. I just really forgot. That's what I was. Oh, I've been just sitting there showing that for no reason. So anyway. Um, Yes, see, I can show cam one, cam two, one and two, like I was doing through most of the video. And I'm think at first I thought I would just switch back and forth to what was the best view, but then I realized I'm just going to forget. <laughs> so I decided to give just do them both. That way, if I move around, you know, it, I'll, I'll probably be in one of those shots. So. Um, Yeah, that's a that's a sixty cost sixty dollars new that that uh, Behringer mixer. Uh, I forgot what it's called. What's the letters on it? I guess I'll go ahead and say what it is. <laughs> Let me get up there. Is a Behringer Xenix 802, and it's not the USB one. Um, the USB one, I think, was only about what well, was that? only I don't know. It was about ten dollars more. But when I was reading all the reviews, um, you know, the uh, it seemed to me that there was really more problems with latency, audio latency, going through the USB. Some of the people were saying they ended up just using the analog output because it'll do both and going through the sound card and they had less latency problems and that's exactly what uh, well I had kind of forgotten but I had read about things like that before um, and I know it from well the phones and the streaming and everything else all the all the every time you convert from you know analog to digital or digital to analog you're gonna end up with latency problems because uh, that just delays the signal a little bit, having to process it and run it through more processors, you know, actual computer processors. Um, even the analog stuff, well, some analog mixers have some electronics in them, and some of them, they have analog, only analog electronics in them, and some of them have some digital electronics in them, so... This being a newer, brand new mixer, only about a year, probably not even more than about a year old now, I guess. There may be more digital processors in here than, you know, one from 10 or 15 years ago. Um, <clears throat> that was beginning to be a, th a, com a more common thing. It was the that cost more. Uh, well, say like a Behringer that had some digital processing in processing and say like digital effects that's usually what they put in them back in the late 90s and um when i uh about the time well the, 
pretty much. I think the last show I did was a show I mixed was two thousand or two thousand and one or something like that. Uh, so, uh, but I, anyway, I did my all my mixing was mostly in the nineties, but from the eight in the eighties and the nineties. But I mixed real mo, real steady most weekends throughout the whole entire nineties for about twelve well for about twelve years, and. Um, most, uh, you know, all the earlier mixers were mo like all most of the Mackies were, you know, pure analog mixers, and uh, um, you might get um, some of the effects. Pro well, most most of the effects processors had some sort of digital, you know, chips in them, but it was it was kind of a combination, I think, with a lot of them, uh, analog electronics in some digital stuff like like some of the vocal effects and you know things like that they were probably probably going to have some digital uh, processors in them and um so anyway we didn't have a real big problem with latency um unless you were really uh far away from your from the stage like oh 150 feet or plus you know and most of our, we would stay, most of the shows, we stayed 75 feet to 100 max away from the stage. So we had uh, 100, usually we used a 75 or 100 or 150 foot snake. And uh, when we did use that 150 foot snake, we didn't get that far out because we just, we didn't have, we weren't using that powerful of a PA that wouldn't, and there wasn't that many people there for us to need to be that far out. Uh, but we usually had a big coil of wire, you know, somewhere at one end or the other of extra wire we weren't using. But uh, anyway, um, what I'm trying to get at is the further away with the analog gear, the further, the longer your wires are, the more latency you get, the more delay in the audio signal. And so that's how far away you can be with a balanced signal and still not hear the latency but with digital processing it's not half <laughs> i mean your your length of your cables makes a difference uh for and it depends on the quality of your cable and what type of like an rca cable just your standard rca which is a high impedance signal a line level signal is a high impedance signal uh, with rcas and stuff like that well there's i mean it's still a line level signal if it's an XLR, you know, a balanced signal, but, well, like, you know, I'm actually getting a little fuzzy on that. We always just called them balanced or unbalanced. We didn't say, if we did say line level, we usually meant, we were talking about like an RCA uh, cable or something like that, at which we kind of, usually when we said line level, we were talking about an unbalanced signal. The pr exact proper way, I can't remember to say it, but we just generally always... To keep things simple, we usually just said balanced, unbalanced, or XLR, quarter inch, uh, TRS, we would say that, you know, um, and we'd say line level. We would use the term line level. Usually when we were talking about line level, that was usually between components, like uh, going between the mixer and the processor, uh, the signal, uh, the effects processor. <clears throat> but... Uh, this is digital. This VMP2 is from the early 2000s. It's all digital. Uh, it doesn't introduce any noticeable uh, delay, you know, latency, not not uh, noticeable. I mean, you could put some in there with the effects, of course. I mean, there's del there's delay in there and all that, but um, but boy, with uh, with streaming, when you really when I first when I really really noticed <laughs> the latency is, uh, you know, you plug this lapel mic into a phone, and now if if uh, I only found I only found one phone app that would actually record from an ex external mic, a video app, uh, and you don't notice any any delay or there's no delay problems or anything. But when you stream that signal from the uh, phone you know over the wi-fi to your computer then you get some serious latency and delay and and the thing is is like the way i've been doing it with um, two of them being video only and one of them was audio only um, with the changes 
in the how fast the data gets to the computer it's always changing like you can maybe see me moving around I guess it's pretty hard to see but there's a difference between each camera you can usually always see quite a bit of difference between the, the movements in each camera like if you can see me doing the same thing right now it looks closer than usual I'm sitting there watching my hand move uh, seems like I see more ghosting in the uh, overhead one than I do in uh, the front on one but um, um, there's um, it, it's con constantly changing uh, the conditions are constantly changing on the Wi-Fi spectrum I guess you'd say and then the other thing is um, I don't think there I never have really caught any real changes you know as to how long it takes the signal to get through the mixer and the, it's fast it's 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 um, going through the mixer the VAMP to the through the computer and then there see you got analog input and then analog to uh, and actually I always think of this as this uh, VAMP as being analog but I know it has, I think it's probably a combination of analog, I'm almost certain it's a combination of analog and digital uh, uh, sound processing in it, you know, like the effects are digital, but all the other components like the the, the EQ and all that, I think they're going to be analog. So anyway, so you go from here to here and then you go into the computer, well then that's, that sends out an analog signal. I do know that. It sends out an analog, not a digital signal. So when it gets to the computer, then the computer converts it to digital so that it can work with it. So there's there's an ADC, you know, in the computer, analog to digital converter. And so that's fast. All, even though that's going through all that, that's fast. But uh, no, no noticeable delay. But now if I'm talking... And I have don't I haven't tried to like doing a bunch of experiments, but I have two webcams, really old, not worth you know using for these videos. They're just so you know such low resolution. <coughs> but uh, like this right now, you know, if you look at my mouth and my movements, it doesn't match exactly because of the delay. Sometimes it gets a little better if I'm only using one camera and not both of them, but the delay is the delay is in the video streaming over the Wi-Fi and that kind of makes sense you know the video is you know three ten, maybe ten times more data than just an audio stream right if I was using though uh, just a USB well for one thing the old USB cams of course a lot less data because it's lower resolution but also it's going over the USB which <coughs> the most megabits per second I've ever seen these phones do is about 75 they generally run anywhere from 50 to, uh, from 30 to 50 and it fluctuates every time anytime I check them <clears throat> well the USB it probably it, I don't know what it runs at uh, constantly you know or generally but it should be capable of 400 to 450 megabits you know uh, those see now those cameras themselves they may not actually send the data that fast but I'm gonna uh, since I do know that they don't give a note like when I, I've used them in years past with the SM58 I used to use my tape deck as a preamp because I didn't well I had this but I hadn't got down and figured out how to set it up um, but a couple of years ago I figured out how to set up the VAMP and I was using it all by itself but just with one mic and then then I got the mixer, and that gives me a whole lot more control over this the, the, the gain structure and it makes a better sound and everything. Because um, I had to use a uh, on the uh, to get the SM58 to work on the VM alone without a mixer, then I had to use a uh, low impedance to high impedance adapter to plug it into that. And uh, that works, but uh, I had to crank everything up all the way to get enough gain for it to, you know, be a high enough signal to work. Uh, because if you you can only gain so much on your computer uh, audio settings, or it will it will just you every time you just get just a tiniest bit loud, it'll distort like crazy. So it's just a, and that was the hard part. It was a constant battle to keep from distorting. And with the, when I before I started using this, I used to use my cassette deck. Well, that's even harder. <laughs> and almost every one of those videos has 
audio at some, you know, hopefully not through the whole thing, but audio at some point that was distorted. Um, when I accidentally get too close or get too loud with the setup I have now, then the compressor shuts it down. And so, uh, I was only a few times it gets loud and then, and then, uh, uh but it doesn't just go nuts distorted. It was a few times I've heard some actual distortion. Now, if I get, if I bump into these knobs, you know, when it's turned, you know, if it's turned, see, this is analog. So if you bump those knobs when it's turned off, it still adjusts it, right? So sometimes my arm will hit them. So if I accidentally hit that and it turns up too much, which that's probably what happened the other day, <clears throat> um, then uh, it would be distorting if the compressor wasn't kicking it down. But what it was doing was that, you know, and of course you could get feedback, and that's what was happening. It was on the verge of feeding back, but the compressor would shut it down every time and you can hear like a little noise when it does that and uh so that was going on through that whole recording but um <clears throat> i don't know why i always want to go I, I get tired and then i go into explain trying to explain stuff <laughs> i don't always do that but um anyway analog is so much easier to work with than digital everybody these days, uh, analogs, you know, digital is so wonderful, so much better. And the thing is, they're young and uh, they're so young that they never, ever used analog gear. They have no idea how much easier it is to work with and, and to get quality audio out of it. Uh, well, decent a analog gear, you know. Uh, if you get something old and worn out and pick it up and start using it now and it's scratchy and makes noises, well, yeah, that wouldn't be any good. But digital gear is so freaking finicky and hard to work with. It's not because I don't know how to use it, because I've been using it since, um, well, since they invented it, you know, as long the years. I've used it, you know, every time something new came along with digital and I got a hold of it, I've been using it, you know. And so I can tell you, um, <clears throat> all digital is not the all in all most wonderful thing and the best way to go. Um, everybody on, on, you know, YouTube talks... The only thing they want to talk about is for, uh, you know, making YouTube videos or podcasts or whatever is getting you that uh, USB microphone, you know, and all that stuff. And in the first place, they all want to get a condenser mic. Condenser mics are great. A good condenser mic is a great mic for a high-end recording studio with sound uh, deadening and, you know, engineered rooms and everything. Yeah, but we don't have those. We're in our bedrooms or our... Or out, you know, out in the woods trying to make a camping video or something, and or out in the driveway working on the truck. You want something that's noise canceling, and you know, a, a, a condenser mic picks up everything for maybe, you know, maybe miles, depending on how much gain you give it, you know. So, um, uh, an SM58 that's made for live sound. A mic like this, it is made to cancel out background noise you know and that's why you had to stay within you know within the t eight inches of it you don't want to be any cl you really don't want to be any closer than where i am right now um four inches six inches if you get it, 10 inches is fine and, and and that is at the gain that i have it set to now i could gain it more but then when i got really close it would just overdrive it like crazy and it probably would distort um you can. I used to do this when I, uh, whenever I was mixing a show and somebody wanted me to record it or mixing a. I used to mix like meetings and stuff too, you know, and where there was people just talking, and they would. That's the ones where they always. Can you record that? And okay, I, I was. I've been in recordings since I was a little kid. The, one of the first neat, cool, elec first electronics I got. Well, the first thing I got was a. Actually, no, I had a real to real cassette deck before I had a transistor radio. <laughs> Not a cassette deck, a real to real I'm sorry, a real to real recorder, analog recorder. I believe I got that before I even got my first transistor radio. I got transistor in the sixties is when transistor radios became a big thing. And they were just so wonderful because they were only this big. You could put them in your pocket. <laughs> They're a little big for your shirt pocket, but you could do it. <laughs> and uh and I mean, they really had terrible sound, you know, and not a very good pickup. Uh, they'd get, you know, get interfered with pretty easy, but they were just the coolest thing. But anyway, so 
what, what I would do to record a meeting, um, <clears throat> I would um, plug in a couple of extra mics, and um, I would go. I would either go out the aux, like a lot of times I would go out the, uh, uh, you know, something like that that we, we wouldn't even be using the monitor. So I would use the monitor outputs to go to the recorder, or it depended on the little mix. Sometimes I was using like a powered mixing head or something, you know, so it depended on how it was made. But I would, uh, uh, sometimes I would use a tape output, like this one has a dedicated tape in and out, you know. Sometimes I would just use the tape output or sometimes, but I like to use um, the aux, aux out, you know, aux sends, say we like the effects, like I was messing with a while ago, I was using the returns, but the aux, you can use the aux sends or you can use um, the monitor sends, you know, to go to the tape deck. And the reason I would do that is because the aux sends or the monitor sends, they're really kind of the same thing, it just depends on how the board's labeled. Uh, <clears throat> you can you have an extra knob like on this board here on this board here it has aux send and returns and see the little knobs that are label have a red on top of them those are the aux uh, <clears throat> actually that's the effects return that will send it into the channel so that would bring up your effects return up into the channel like instead of like you know I have my I said that earlier I have my uh, mains going into the VM and then my and then out of the VM output over to the computer. Well, what you can do with effects is send it. You send it out of the board. It sends a main signal out of the board. This one happens to only be mono instead of stereo, which is kind of weird because it has a stereo returns, but. Um, you send it. You could send it out to the VAMP and then back from the VAMP back into the aux returns. Then you would have to, whenever you wanted to hear that um, that affected signal, then you would um, you would bring that up. You know, however much you want, and that's really cool uh, on a vocal for a singer or something. If you have, especially if you have, uh, well, for one thing, it let, lets you use. Well, you can only use one effect at a time, though. Or what we could do, we would have stereo effects units, which this is a stereo effects unit, so you could send um, a signal out to that effect, and then you can have, uh, and this one you can do that too. You can have different effects on the right than on the left, and so you could, um, well, with a bigger board, <clears throat> you, you wouldn't just have one main aux in and one return. You would have a return for every channel. So you could put that return, I'm getting into <laughs> can of worms here. Anyway, you could, you could put that, uh, you could put the left on one channel and the right on another. That's what I was going to say. And so you can have different effects on other channels. But otherwise, you would need a dedicated effects unit for every channel. Um, and so we never really had the money to have. We might have three effects units, about the most we ever had. Um, <clears throat> High-end outfits would have that. You know, they would have a. I have an effects unit dedicated for each vocal channel and then another one for the drums, you know, and another one for... They wouldn't usually... You wouldn't usually do it for the guitars and the basses because the uh, the play, they would have their own effects, you know, right there with the rig. But for the vocals, you would need, you need effects. And for the uh, drums, it was pretty handy to have... Uh, well, the main thing you want for drums is compression and noise gate. That's really what you want. Um... So um, you don't really want any, you know, delay and this and that and the other. I mean, you can, but um, so anyway, I could do that and then just have a, but the, and then you can just bring it up or down however much you want for each channel, you know, separately. That's a cool thing, except for one thing. When you do it that way, when you send it out to your effects and then send it back, to uh, the return, then they call it dry or wet. You know, so the more you, uh, more effects you give it, the more wet it is, and the less the more dry it is. And the and the reason I don't know why who decided to call it that, but dry or wet signal. Uh, but the thing is, is you you never get away from having that original signal. So um, 
what you're doing is just adding uh, the processed signal back to it. That sounds good in a live show, except for one thing. When somebody gets too loud, then you get that distortion. And on, and on a live show, it's usually not a big deal because most of the time your singers or even your screamers, you know, for grindcore metal bands, they are listening to the monitors and they know what they're doing. They can hear it and they know when they're doing the what they're going for. They know when they're if they're distorting in a way that they don't want, they back off from the mic, right? They know how to work the mic, as they say. But uh, I'm not monitoring myself because I can't stand. I don't want to sit here and wear a headset through the whole video. It looks goofy, and it also drives me nuts to hear myself that loud all the time. So I don't. Um, <clears throat> I mean, my ears are still kind of fatigued from doing that a while ago, and I and, uh, and my ears are always have ringing in my ears from me, from mixing sound all those years, and so it brings that out. It makes it makes me really hear it. I've just now noticed that I can really hear it right now. Um, so I don't do that. Uh, but here's the thing. I'm going straight to the computer, which is very sensitive to distortion. It it's easy to distort it. Uh, because converting from analog to digital, it wouldn't be very noticeable in the analog signals, what I'm trying to say, if I were going straight to the amps. But since I'm going to the computer and it's being recorded, every little subtle distortion or every, you know, a slight noise is a big noise, you know, and all that. So if that dry signal was going straight to the computer, then every time I got a little too loud, it would distort. It would hit, it would just peg up past zero dB. And, um, <clears throat> but so that the best thing to do in this kind of situation, and really that's how I generally mix. I usually had was had one or maybe two effects processors, so I would always put one on the main output, like I have it now, daisy chained, go straight from the mixer to the effects processor, from the effects processor on the live show down the snake to the speakers, or here, you know, through the cable to the computer. And that way, the computer only gets the affected signal. Uh, so the compression shuts down any uh, you know extra loud noises. The noise gate shut, and when I stop talking, the noise gate stops any background noise. It kills, just shuts the signal down to nothing unless I talk. You know, unless, unless something makes enough noise to open up that noise gate. And then I have a little bit of effects to. Uh, a little bit of reverb. It's called reverb, but it, the one I'm using on the on the right now is to actually kind of kill the reverb in the room to make it. it sounds better when you're talking to not have a lot of reverb. When you're singing, it sounds good to have reverb. And this, of course, this has um, <clears throat> it has um, this uh, V amp two has a a through e that I can just punch in. And you can set, uh, I mean, there's a couple of hundred you can do in here. But you can quickly just hit A, B, C, D, E. And I have A for talking, B for singing. C is actually I used for recording cassette, uh, digitizing cassette. And it actually is it's compression and noise gate and some effect, actually quite a bit of a reverb. It made it, the one I was doing it made it sound better. It just, I don't know why it, uh, it, it just seems so dead with nothing, you know, no reverb on it. I wasn't planning on using reverb. I was just really planning on uh, stopping. It w the one I was recording was a was an old cassette of a band called Tourniquet, uh, which is actually still around, a Christian uh, metal band, a really heavy metal band. And um, I had that cassette from way back then. And um, it actually was kind of messed up, and it didn't sound right. And so I actually was fixing it, you know, and making me a CD that I could listen to when I wanted to. I actually don't listen to my old music much anymore at all, but um, I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and actually got it sounding pretty good. But for some reason, it uh, sounded better with some reverb on it after going, you know, from the cassette deck through the uh, mixer and then through here and to the computer. It uh, it sounded really just dead. And so I'm <laughs> giving, it, giving it some... Uh, Reverb, uh, you know, use, uh, using the noise gate helps stop with the tape, stop most of the tape hiss, and then using the compressor stopped it from, you know, overdriving the uh, computer 
input and distorting the whole thing and then a little reverb just made it sound a little live you know because kind of more like i heard them live many times well i helped make i help i just i didn't get to mix let's see did i ever mix for them i don't remember if i ever i remember the first couple of times i saw them i wasn't mixing i was just helping and so well i do remember this for for sure the, guy, the, guy, the drummer's name is ted kirkpatrick and he had 10 toms plus his cymbals and his kick drum double kick drums i don't remember if he had two separate kick drums or a double kick on a big drum but i don't remember that now but uh anyway i had to mic those 10 toms and and uh, it was a a guy a, a drummer by the name of barry zeller a local drummer here in a metal band who taught me how to mic drums and i mic'd ted's drums that night and he started talking to me you know when he sat down to check them out and everything and he said he gave me the greatest compliment I ever had. He said, that's the best job anybody's ever done, mocking my drums. <laughs> and the drummers, you know, would always sit down once you got it all set up and and play through and listen to them on the monitors and see if they sounded like they wanted them to sound. And, uh, of course, I didn't do the mixing. There were some other guys who were, um, at that time, that was, in the, that was in like 90, 91 or something like that. And these other guys knew a heck of a lot more than I did. I learned more over the years, but uh, and from those guys, you know, these other guys. But uh, anyway, um, I uh, that was pretty pretty cool. Um, and I went blank, <clears throat> but. Um, Oh, I was, yeah, I was mixing down that cassette. So, um, I digitized that cassette, and it, it had some really bad volume changes, you know, like, um, it's, um, once I got it, what I did is, of course, I just let, I just used, like I was saying, everything I described, compression, noise gate, I, I just, um, set the best level, I kind of listened to the quiet, you know, the ones that had dropped, where the volume wasn't quite right, it was, low and then there was some and then some other places on the tape it was normal so i just left it recorded both sides of it i'm a cassette i have a tech cassette deck that has auto reverse so i let it go through both sides got it recorded then i got into audacity and fixed the levels <coughs> took took a week i think <coughs> to uh well i was doing well no it just took a few days to several days to do that and then the whole, the whole reason I was doing it was to kind of get myself familiarized and set up with how I wanted to work because I was going to do um, another cass cassette for a friend. Um, he had some recordings that had been done way back in the eight, late 80s, or I mean late 90s and early 2000s. He was mixing sound for a church, and there was some, you know, Singers, you know, special singers and concerts and stuff. Not concerts, but like singing, singing with backup tracks, you know, that kind of thing. And um, anyway, he wanted to. Uh, I was mix, I was digitizing that for him to put on a CD for a, a lady that had bought that tape and loved it and was just about wearing it out, you know. And she wanted to give her a CD so she could. Well, I I made I ended up remixing the whole thing and making it sound better. Actually, I ended up doing at least three complete remixes of it and i said you know some of these here are better and some of these over here on this one are better i said i gave it all to him i gave him 10 gig of of, of, of audio and i said you pick what you like and you put it on the cd i had listen i had i had such bad stereo ear that's what they call it if you don't know that's what they call it when you wear your ears out listening i had such bad stereo ear after doing all that <clears throat> but um Anyway, you can do a lot with just a couple of simple things. Can't mix a whole band on here, of course, but for um, you can do recording. I mean, you could if you played. I don't play instruments, but I used to sing. But uh, you know, one two tracks at a time, you could do full recordings with just this little. Uh, they say it. What do they call it? One, two, three, four, five. They say it's a six-channel mixer. I call it a four-channel mixer because it's got four four knobs on it. But uh, I mean, it does. It has, you know, a mic, a mic, and then a left and a right, 
line level, left and right line level. <coughs> and you can use <coughs> ballast or unbalanced on it. So it's very versatile. It has a three band EQ on the board <coughs> and um, and then along with the effects processor with the compressor and noise gate, then that's the thing. This is really a guitar processor, but it has just the basic, you know, compressor, noise gate, and a couple, some three about maybe six rever different reverbs in it for vo that's for vocals. And that's all you really need. And uh, so I got that's the reason I got that is because I wanted a dual purpose thing that I could use for. Uh, guitar in because uh, behind me there's my guitar which i didn't i never have been any good at playing guitar <clears throat> but i'd play with it like once in a while um but um so i can do both with it but not at the same time i was hoping i'd be able to do both at the same time but you can't i thought maybe i could do guitar on the left and vocal on the right but it just won't quite work out that way <coughs> but anyway Uh, I really all all I end up using it for is what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> so I guess that's a signal that it's absolutely time to stop this video. <clears throat> Anyway, I don't know why I'm going off telling more stories. I'm just going from one story to the other. <clears throat> completely off from what I was... Well, not completely. It is all about sound, but <clears throat> anyway. I'm going to go ahead and go and um, try to get my head wrapped back around about what I was actually trying to do tonight. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> said 30 minutes ago now, I guess. Yep. It's now an hour and 39 minutes 40 minutes ago i said i need to eat supper <laughs> i'm crazy <clears throat> okay so anyway i'm gonna go and uh yeah if, if anybody i'm gonna put this video up so if anybody um <clears throat> figures out how to get your basic lapel mic that's made with the trrs connectors and a trs con Converter, if you ever run across a converter that will make it work on a regular mixing mixer, let me know. Because <laughs> I would like to be able to do that sometimes. And I, I've tried to... Tonight I didn't try all my converters because I did that last time and it did none of them work. But I tried every ch pinout change I, I had. And I've got probably... Five, I don't know. Five, eight, ten different ways I could change the pinout, you know. I, pro I guess I probably only have about five different ways but anyway i tried them all on the other mic and it didn't didn't work so i didn't see any point in going that far with this one <clears throat> so i'm gonna go and um see you later <laughs>